Hey guys, welcome back to Vincent Jason Save the Nation. We've got a great show for you today. Really interesting things happening up in Ottawa and other parts of Canada. We've got a great guest. Vince, can you let us know who we have with us today? Joining us today is, uh, luckily for us for this issue, a Canadian and even better, a citizen journalist who's been speaking with many of these truckers on the ground in Ottawa about why they are staging this protest up in our northern neighbor's capital. Uh, Rob McLeod joins us from postmodern.ca uh, and is based out of Ottawa. Rob, thanks so much for spending some time with us this week. Thanks for having me, guys. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, you just, know, it's, it's yeah, really, go ahead, I just want to say that we were speaking uh, off camera and he, Rob here is a legitimate ca uh, Canadian because I heard him say A a couple times at the end of every <laughs> sentence. So that's so, it. That's the tell. Yeah, he's, he's definitely, I was like, this guy's a real Canadian. That giveaway. <laughs> yeah, we, we got one. <laughs> well, um, we want to hear what's going on, eh? Yeah, yeah. What is happening <laughs> in Canada? If you could summarize it for an American audience, because, you know, we've been following it, and it probably depends on what news outlets you consume here in the United States, the way you think about what's happening in Canada right now. But if you could describe what you've seen, what is it? Yeah, totally. And, you know, I, I think that's been one of the biggest challenges is finding a, an appropriate, you know, news outlet that can give you the the, the straight shot of what's been going on. So um, we've been covering this for the last, I want to say, four to five weeks at this point. Um, and uh, we were downtown a, a couple of days before the, the truckers arrived in Ottawa um, and, you know, have been down there uh, uh, for the last couple of weeks ever since. Um, and what we saw on the ground was um, I want to say a groundswell of optimism and hope. Um, you know, I, I think the group on the ground was, yes, it was the truckers that came in on the convoy, but then, you know, part of the picture that you're not seeing is the amount of people who thought that there was, there was no hope and they didn't have a voice, um, to speak up against some of these mandates and pandemic policies. And this has given them, uh, a platform and an opportunity and optimism for once over the last two years. Okay. But before we get to more yeah. sort of the details that are on mm. the ground as we speak, I'd love to find out like how we got here, which is like, what was the impetus for these truckers and all of these people to arrive in Ottawa? And, and if you could describe like, sort of Canada's posture towards its people with, with regards to COVID, is it, is it just those COVID policies or are there other concerns that these truckers are bringing? I've heard the concerns about uh, economics and, and the way the truckers are treated generally in Canada over these past few years. G give us just a basic sense of the grievances that have led people to Ottawa and other places in Canada. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so I think one um, introductory point that I'll make that is important to recognize is that in Canada, uh, many of the pandemic policies are implemented at the uh, provincial level. So it's not federal jurisdiction in terms of which provinces will have a, a vaccine mandate and that sort of thing. But right. um, you're absolutely right to point to the fact that this is more than just COVID. Um, what we've been hearing is that this is an economic issue. You know, the, the trucking industry in Canada has already um, gone through some, some really difficult times in the pandemic in terms of labor shortages. Um, you know, the I think the breaking point for all of this was the federal uh, decision to implement a vaccine mandate at the border, which would prevent it wouldn't prevent Canadian truckers from coming back. But what it would do is force them to go into 14 days of quarantine when they returned on Canadian soil. Um, and I think what you saw in the early days was a lot of kind of media sensationalism around, um, you know, what effect this is going to have on our supply lines and, you know, food prices and grocery stores. Um, but, you know, I, I think that was overblown because, you know, the, the logistics and trucking companies, they, they deal with, um, you know, unforeseen um, circumstances like this all the time. So it's just a matter of, you know, arranging another trucker to pick up a load that gets dropped at, at the border if uh, a Canadian trucker isn't vaccinated. So, you know, the whole vaccine mandate coming down from the federal level at the border itself, yeah, that's one issue. Um, but being on the ground, speaking to people, it's it's more so an economic issue. And what I think it is, is the the chasm between you know, the workers in the knowledge economy and the workers in, you know, the, the manual labor economy, that, that divide is just growing each and every day. And it was, the wedge was, was pandemic policies that got driven between those two groups. 